All right, here he is. Dude. How's it going? How are you? I'm good. You have 16 podcasts, a Netflix <laughs> show, but Keith Danfield's in your band, the New York Times written about your wedding. You are like a certifiably famous person. <laughs> Um, only to, to my family, but, but again, I, I appreciate it. Because you, you made me think about my personal experience listening to uh, The Life of Pablo, Kanye's album. That was the album where mm. he kept tweaking it that first yeah. week or two that it was out. And I really liked it at first. And there were things yeah. that I liked less as he made small tweaks. And it really pointed out to me that experience of listening to him sort of just tinker with it in right in front of us. Just how subtle the difference between a song that I love and a song that I don't like is, <laughs> and how small, small things will make the difference. And you guys are, you know, musicians are trying to get, you know, like 10,000, 100,000, a million people to like something. And like, you know, just, just, just a slight movement of some piece or an addition or a subtraction can make all the difference. Yeah, it's funny how much the there's a battle between instinct and and then you know the instinct to tinker <laughs> you know, there's your first instincts uh, uh, to create and um and then these instincts to second guess what what you did and it was fascinating to watch somebody second guess their creative work in real time on such a public stage i mean i would i would kind of like to see more people do that Although I wonder if, if I had just received the la the end version, I've been like, okay, I accept this. I like this, but seeing you tweak it and mess with it, I'm like, Oh, now you've, now, you know, I don't like 3.0. I liked 1.0. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. One of my favorite things on song exploder is getting to hear early versions of things and also especially abandoned versions of things. Um, because, you know, the, the fact that we're doing an episode about the show, uh, we're doing an episode about the song means that the song came out and it was, the artist has had a big enough career that it was on my radar and it ended up being in, in the podcast. Essentially it's a success story. Um, so you know, kind of already know the ending. So it's really exciting for me on a storytelling level, when you get to hear all the different ways where it could have been a failure or it could have been something else or it could have been, you know, a, a, this idea that got um, changed or adapted, you know, you get to see like, oh, it wasn't inevitable, the success story. There were lots and lots of potential dead ends um, or, or different endings for this. Are you picking songs and going to the team and saying, hey, I want to do a, a, a show about X song? Or are you going to the team and saying, what song are you willing to unpack with me? Um, I can tell you about a conversation that I've, I'm having right now um, with an artist about, about being on the show or rather. So her, her publicist reached out and said, would you want to do an episode? And, and, uh, and I said, yes, definitely. Um, and they are you like, getting the only more thing we don't want to do. Are you, are, you, are you getting more incoming than like reaching out? Like are people saying we want to do a song exploder? Are you getting a lot of that? I generally now get, um, I generally now do my episodes based on uh, a sort of coinciding, like there's, I'm always listening to music. And so that I have kind of a list of things that I would like to do, but I kind of need the incoming um, inquiry to line up with that because I find it's just too hard to, to cold call someone and say, Hey, will you be on the show? Um, they, people just, if they aren't ready, if they're not, you know, mus musicians are really uh, tied to their sort of 
like these very specific promotional cycles. I'm sure you've experienced this where, you know, someone will say, Hey, do you want to do an interview? They're available from these three hours on this one day and that's it. No other time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just too hard. I'll be like, this is, I have, I, I have so much interest in this. I think that we could have a great conversation. Um, I think it would be really great. It doesn't matter. It, you can't even get past the gatekeepers of the publicist or the manager, the label, whatever, um, because they're saying, well, they're just, they're, that's not what they're doing right now. They're not doing interviews. So I kind of wait for the, for the pitch to come in to me and have it line up with something that I'm already excited about. So you were saying you were, you were talking to uh, 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 the the team of a, of a female artist. Yeah, and and they said you know they suggested a couple of songs. They were like, we don't want to do the single, but th that's already been out. We want to do look look forward. And I was like, okay. Um, and they they were like, how about this song? We think this will be the next single. And I was like, yeah, it's, I don't think that it's going to be right musically for the show, and I didn't think that it was going to be right lyrically. Like it was very, very, very metaphorical and um and felt kind of distant and um and so i always go back and i say can you ask the artist or if i get to talk to the artist directly you know i say what's the song that you feel the most personally attached to that you feel connected to the backstory in this really intimate way i'm not going to be able to get that even from a deep reading of the lyrics you know because there might be things out you know off screen that are happening um that are really meaningful to you. Uh, and this will be the chance to talk about them. Um, but you have to tell me, like, what are the ones? What What's the one or two or three songs that sort of qualify? And then they might send me options. And then from that, I can say, okay, I think this should be the one that, that we'll do. So you can't do it on just any song? I mean, I imagine you could apply this method to any record. You could. I think you, for sure you could do an episode on any song, but I think the the episodes that I find the most interesting and um, satisfying to make are the ones where, like I said earlier, you know, I can have a rich portrait of the artist through the song. So um, some songs don't have really interesting stories. Some right. huge hits that people love don't necessarily have an interesting story. Um, and one thing that I, that I'm interested in, this might, you know, not always be so satisfying to the listeners. Um, but I think the show is about the story. Um, if it happens to be the story about a song that's, that they know and love great, but there are plenty of songs that are very popular that many people have never heard. So you, you kind of can't count on the idea that like everybody's going to know it. If a lot of people know it, that's great. But um, I'd rather hear the one that has the most interesting story. So someone who can, who's never listened to the podcast before, who's never heard of the artist before, can put it on and be like, well, this was an interesting t way to think about how someone's brain works for 20 minutes. You know, they started with nothing and they end with this song. And we talked about how uh, they got there. And really it's about um, taking pieces of their life and translating it into musical ideas and then hearing those pieces one by one slowly coalesce. Who's on the wish list that you wish to do an episode with that you haven't gotten to yet? I mean, Kanye would certainly be on the list. Um, I don't know how that would go, <laughs> um, but I think he's... I think he's brilliant and uh, and fascinating and um, and was just so important, you know. Um, Radiohead would, has been on my list for a long time too. Uh, yeah, there are so many. Flying Lotus um, is another person who I'd love to have on the show. Um, I, basically, this is what I do all day: is I just sit around and taking a shower, and I'm just thinking about like, you know, who else would be great? <laughs> and the list is just infinite. But you're waiting for them to call you. Well, some of these people Cause, I cause have you tried. Because <laughs> Flying Lotus, you could get. I can't. I've tried. Um, he's an artist. You know, not every artist wants to talk about their music in this way. Um, some people are are just not really willing to either talk about their process or expose the sort of the 
um, different layers of their song in that way. You know, um, Prince was somebody who who was not into that idea, um, who was very protective about his sort of uh, his um, work materials. You know, um, some some artists are just uh, are aren't into it, and I respect that, and that's that's fine. Um, so yeah, there are a few people um, who I've tried, you know, many on multiple occasions. Fortet, you know, people who are some of my favorites, um, who just, it's just not for them. Kanye is an interesting example because I think a lot of people feel, and they may be right, that he is very much a creation of a committee. There are other people writing a lot of those lyrics. There are other people making the beats. And I'm sure that he gets the beat and he gets the lyric and he, you know, he zhuzhes it up, he Kanye's it up. But you know, a lot of the really successful ones, people are like, I went in the studio and I made this beat and then I added this and then I added this and then I added this and I was thinking about this. And, you know, for somebody who's kind of handed a lot of pieces, um, that would be, that's an entirely different relationship. You know, that's one of the things that um, has really changed for me about Song Exploder. This is sort of what I was trying to say earlier about um, authorship and, and collaboration. Um, you know, what is the, for sure, there are, there are artists in the world who are the result of a committee, you know, who, who an a and person has found them and they've, you know, there, there's an A&R person and a publicist and a stylist and a label and, and, um, what they put out into the world is not necessarily so tied to something fundamental within them. I think Kanye and I think there are other artists out there, not a lot, but I think there are other people who he has such a specific curatorial lens um, mm. that he sees the world through. Um, yeah, he might be taking pieces from this person and this person. You know, he'll he'll hear something and say, "This is amazing. I want that. I'm going to get the person who did that and have them do the best version of that for me, and I'm going to take what I want from that." And I'm also going to take what I want from this. And I'm also going to take what I want from this. He's still ultimately calling the shots of what those pieces are and how sure. he's going to put them in, in his blender. And I think I, need, I learned that that blender is, is also a form of artistry. 